always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jessica, and I'll be sharing some of the top entertainment news that you just need to know right now. But before we do, I want to say that as we record this, it is Labor Day weekend. It's been a quiet weekend for us. I mean, we did get to do something. Uh, We went up to the Poconos, my husband and I, to spend time with my brother and his girlfriend. We rented an Airbnb. It was really low-key, laid back. We cooked every night at the house. We just kind of walked around town, explored. We had a really nice time. It was really good to reconnect with my brother. You know, as you get older and you start kind of living your own lives, you kind of get lost and, um, like, not separated, but separated, you know. So it was nice to reconnect with him and get to know his girlfriend, who I love so much. She's such an angel. And yeah, so we had a really nice time. Again, super, super quiet. We came home super early this morning, and we've just been doing stuff around the house, mowing the lawn, some cleaning, cuddling with the pups, you know, the usual. I will say, though, I am officially in the fall spirit. I don't know if it was like walking around in the Poconos, so like that mountain air was kind of cool. It also could have been the fact that I kind of went on a shopping spree at the end of last week. I went to one of my favorite local businesses and just supported, supported, supported. Um, I realized that I had donated a lot of my wardrobe last year when I switched out my closet. So in the spring, I got rid of so much of my fall and winter clothes. And I realized I had nothing. I didn't even have a pair of denim pants, like nothing. So I had to go and I had to go buy some new clothes and they're super trendy and they're super cute. I'm kind of getting over the whole leggings and oversized sweatshirt, not because it's not cute and not because it's not comfortable. It's simply because it's all I have been wearing since March. I want to look cute. I want to look good. So I'm really excited about my new wardrobe for the fall. I'm kind of inspired to go do like a Starbucks themed photo shoot for Instagram. I know like super basic, but I am really, really loving this pumpkin cream cold brew concoction. It is giving me all sorts of life. So Yes, I want to do a photo shoot with that drink wearing my super cute, cute, cute fall clothes. I am so excited to put them on. I have nowhere to wear them to, but I'm going to wear them around the house. Feel good about myself. Um, So in, you know, because of these new clothes that make me feel human again, I'm going to talk about some of my, some of the biggest fashion icon moments, in my opinion, some of my favorite things from like film and in Hollywood at the end of the episode when I do my my roundup. But before that, we have to talk about some entertainment and celebrity news. Now, again, it is the holiday weekend. It's kind of quiet. Uh, everyone's taking some time off. So celebrity drama is kind of at a minimum. However, there is some big drama with Dr. Dre. So I'm definitely going to get into that first. It was a big discussion last night at dinner, so I can't wait to get your take on it. I also have some TV news, and then for some reason, I have to explain that in 2020, body shaming is not okay. So with that, let's just dive right on in. So like I said, there is some Dr. Dre drama. So new legal documents have surfaced regarding the divorce between Dr. Dre and his estranged wife, Nicole Young. 
This is a contentious and bitter divorce battle. The documents claim that Dr. Dre was violent to her in the past, and also it provides a list of why she feels that she is entitled to nearly $2 million a month in in temporary spousal support while their divorce moves through the system. Guys, this list is absolutely wild. I'm going to break it down for you and remember that this list does not include the $5 million she is asking in lawyer fees, even though she's only filed for divorce just two months ago. So again, this is the breakdown on why Nicole feels that she needs about $2 million a month. So let's break it down. So for laundry and cleaning, she requires $10,000 a month. For clothes, $135,000 a month. For education, which is tuition and living expenses, she requires $60,000 a month. For entertainment, $900,000 a month. For entertainment, um, charitable contributions, one one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars a month. Now, remember, guys, these charitable contributions are tax write-offs. Uh, also, her mortgage, one hundred thousand dollars a month, and this one just blows my mind. Telephone, cell phone, and email. What do you think? Take a guess. For television, cell phone, oh, I'm sorry, not television, telephone, cell phone, and email, $20,000 a month. That is insane to me. I think the entertainment is just absolutely mind-blowing, $900,000 a month. On what kind of entertainment, boo-boo, are you using? I I cannot. Anyway, back to the story. Nicole's life has not been altered much at all since filing for the divorce. Sources connected to Dre say that he is covering all of her expenses, including the Malibu house where Nicole is staying, chefs, security, etc. But in her documents, she says that Dre has been controlling everything when it comes to finances, denying her the right to use, among other things, her black Amex card. Listen, boo-hoo is all I got to say about that. So you need all this money for all this stuff, but he is still paying for you to live in your house in Malibu with chefs and security? Come on, girl. Anyway, in her documents, Nicole goes into detail about the prenup that she signed using the, quote, gun to the head metaphor just before their wedding. She also claims that Dr. Dre ripped it up several years ago, well, several years into their marriage, although he denies it. At stake in this divorce is a cool billion dollars. So she just wants, she wants a piece of that pie. She claims at one point he ordered, quote, do not spend one more cent, period. You can't be mean and disrespectful and spend my hard-earned money. F that. Yes, that's a threat. I'm putting the beach house up for sale next week. So what do you guys think about that? Is he wrong? I... I, I have my opinions. So moreover, she also claims that she became alarmed when he had his brother-in-law come out to the Malibu home to pick up a gun of his. She says she feared that Dre um, wouldn't come back with it or he would do something violent with it. He uh, allegedly sent her text asking why that why she was ignoring him. And should he come over? So he's trying to like instill this, this fear in her. Now, listen, this is turning into quite the divorce battle between the two. And I'm just sitting here in shock that Nicole needs about $2 million per month to survive. That is insane to me. And it is so incredibly out of touch and battling 
for the two million, even though she's still living at home and she has these chefs and that they're all still being paid for? I mean, I think Dr. Dre kind of has a point. It's his hard-earned money at the end of the day. Why does she feel like she can spend spend all of that money and an excessive amount of money? I know that when you are married, you are a team, but I want to know what she was doing, you know, as a team member while Dre was out there working for his fortune. It's a team, but do you deserve $2 million a month simply because you were married? And if he was working, well, was she on vacation? Like, what was she doing while he was working? Not for nothing, but like, I think Dr. Dre is right. And from what it sounds like, it doesn't sound like Nicole is caring for a household, like being a like a housewife or trophy wife. Like she's just out spending two million dollars a month. I, she's like again, she's not caring for a house because she has employees that are doing all of that. I find it so difficult to have empathy for the wealthy. I really, really do. And I mean, come on, twenty thousand dollars a month for your telephone and cell phone and email? How? How is that even possible? Can someone please message me and explain to me how that is possible? Google is free. Google is free. $20,000 a month, that's $240,000 a year on your phone and your email. Like, even if you were to like upgrade your like Google like storage to like a terabyte, it does not come anywhere near $20,000 a month. What kind of cell phone do you use? Are you buying a new cell phone every single day? Are you buying a new cell phone several times a day? I don't know where this money is going. And who they're going to present this in front of a judge and who's going to sit there and be like, yep, that makes sense. That's totally fair. You can have all that money. That is in Same to me. Again, I have no empathy for the wealthy at all when it comes to something like this. If you feel that you need $2 million a month in order to survive, because newsflash for you, there's a lot of people out there who will never see $2 million in their lifetime and you need it in a month. I think that's disgusting. I do not like it and I do not support it. I Listen, I'm all about women supporting women, but not in this case, not at all. And there, I have said it. It might be controversial, but here I am. So anyway, Nicole, good luck to you. Dr. Dre, I hope you keep your fortune. Do not share it with her. She is greedy. Maybe put her to work and have her earn a dollar once would be wonderful. So anyway, that is my opinion on that. I wish you could have heard us around the table last night talking about it. So, yeah. Oh, I I just scrolled up on my notes and I just saw this. $900,000 a month on entertainment. I need a breakdown of what is entertaining her for a month, especially, especially during a lockdown. I would love to know. There are fires in California. We are in a pandemic. What are you doing for $900,000 a month in entertainment? I guarantee you there's a home entertainment system in your house. How much are you paying to rent movies? Netflix is what, seven bucks a month? Okay, maybe nine. Hulu, how expensive is that? How expensive is Disney Plus? How entertained do you need to be these days? Go outside, read a book. Come on, this makes me sick to my stomach. (laughs) Um, Anyway, I need to stop talking about it because I am going to drive myself absolutely insane. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some TV news. And then we're going to talk about why it's not good to body shame people. I understand this is probably a foreign concept for some people, but I just have to say it. And then at the end of this episode, I am going to recap some some of what I think are some of the most iconic fashion moments in television and movies, you know, in Hollywood. So stay tuned for that. It is a fun, fun list. And I give you some insights as to who I am as a person. Um, So stay tuned, guys. We will be right back. 
Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Hello, friends, and welcome back. I think my blood pressure is back to normal after talking about Nicole Young and trying to understand why she needs to justify the need for $2 million a month while going through a divorce. So that is now in the past for us. I need to move forward for my own sanity. So now we're going to talk about some television news First up, Gray Sloan Memorial Hospital is back up and running. Gray's Anatomy is set to resume production after unexpectedly postponing filming due to the coronavirus pandemic, much like many, many TV shows and movies. Filming for season 17, I cannot believe already, like we're in season 17, will resume on September 8th in Los Angeles. The cast recently held a virtual table read. Ellen Pompeo, who plays the illustrious Meredith Grey, gave fans of the long-running medical drama series a treat by revealing a little detail about the show's upcoming 17th season. Pompeo took to Twitter to tease, quote, Yes, I have a new favorite couple. Not sure what you'll call them, but they are adorable. You guys are going, you guys can have fun guessing who. A fan later asked Pompeo if her favorite new couple was Maggie and Boyf, to which the actress responded affirmatively, ding, 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 you guys, you have no idea how adorable they are, Pompeo wrote on Twitter. So, spoiler alert, near the end of season 16, we saw Maggie Pierce and Dr. Winston in a romantic entanglement after meeting at a conference. I love that entanglement, by the way, is now how we describe uh, relationships. So, that's fun. Anyway, so season 17 of Grey's Anatomy will also incorporate the biggest medical crisis in decades, the COVID-19 pandemic. During a Television Academy panel in July, executive producer producer and showrunner Krista Vernoff said Dr. Meredith Grey and her colleagues, who have treated all manner of emergencies over more than 350 episodes, will have to face the coronavirus and its medical and human consequences. Vernoff said discussions with real doctors have highlighted the emotional toll an element likely to be reflected in Gray Sloan Memorial Hospital's medical staff's response to the pandemic. Listen, I absolutely adore this show. Has it done me dirty in the past? Absolutely. But I am in this for the long haul. I have been a fan since it first came out. I remember like the teaser commercials for it. Uh, Since we don't have any cable, I don't watch in real time now like I used to, but I do binge the seasons, but like season at a time. So I will wait for everything for the whole season to air, and then I will just pick a day and just lose it by just binge watching the entire season. Grey's Anatomy is like the days of our lives, or better yet, the general hospital of our generation. Over the weekend, I was having a conversation about this with my brother's girlfriend, and we were just talking about the show, the characters, and who's been written off. 
who like how they did some people dirty with the write offs are insane. I will never forgive them for what they did to Karev. I never, but I'm still watching the show. I'm still in, still in it for the long haul. Um, and as we were talking about it, like the sentences that were coming out of our mouths were insane. Like my brother and my husband just like looked at me and like looked at us. Like we were insane talking about like plots and storylines of the show. The Grace Sloan Memorial Hospital is an intense place to work. Like I said, I couldn't believe some of the sentences that were coming out of my mouth. But the main theme that we both kind of took from this is that we just miss George O'Malley. He was just way too pure for that world. But I love the OG George O'Malley. He was such a great character. I miss him so much. And it's so weird that after 17 seasons, I still miss one of the first write-offs from the show. Wild. Um, so I'm excited to see what they're going to do this season. I cannot wait to see these new relationships. And I'm very curious to see how they're going to handle uh, the coronavirus and how they're going to show it. It's something that's really going to hit home. I think some episodes do a really wonderful job of just really punching you in the gut. And the COVID scenario, I imagine, is going to be really heart-wrenching. I think the interns are going to witness, unfortunately, a lot of people die alone, which is something that has been happening. And they're going to have to be holding the hands of these patients. And it's going to be heartbreaking. It's going to hit home. And I cannot wait to curl up on the couch with a glass of wine and some Kleenex and watch the show. So that is that on that. In some more television news, Jeopardy! is coming back for its 37th season on Monday, September 14th. Again, 37 seasons. That's insane. The ever-popular ABC series resumed production amid the ongoing coronavirus pandemic earlier this summer with new changes in place, according to a press release. The changes include enhanced social distancing guidelines between host Alec Trebek and the show's contestants, as well as a new role for Jeopardy! powerhouse contestant Ken Jennings. When the show returns, viewers viewers will notice a new and updated take on the show's set with a revamped stage that now allows for more space between the three contestants' podiums and Alec Trebek. Additionally, production and has protocols in place in accordance with the current government guidelines to protect contestants, staff, crew, and talent from the spread of COVID-19. Contestants will also reportedly be tested for COVID-19 before coming into the studio, and the staff and crew will be tested regularly. Additionally, everyone off-camera will be provided with some PPE. Host Alex Trebek is excited to get back to work, stating, quote, I feel good and I feel excited because once again, Jeopardy! has demonstrated that it's at the forefront of television programming. I believe we are the first quiz show to come back on the air in the COVID-19 era. On a personal level, I'm excited because it gets me out of the house. It gives me something to do on a regular basis. I was missing that. Ooh, Alex Trebek, weren't we all? Feels so good to get out of the house. I know, like I said, this weekend, getting out of the house for two nights just felt so incredible. So I am happy for Alex to be getting back to work and back in the studio. I know someplace that he absolutely loves. Recently crowned Jeopardy! GOAT player and 74-time champion, Uh, Jennings is also joining the show where he will serve as a consulting producer on this season. In the new role, Ken Jennings will present his own special video categories, develop projects, assist with contestant outreach, and serve as a general ambassador for the show, according to this press release. Quote, Though I've played my last round of Jeopardy! as a contestant, I am delighted to have the opportunity to remain involved with my favorite show. I'm still on all the action, but I don't have to worry about phrasing things in the form of a question anymore. I am just sitting here wondering if they are grooming Mr. Jennings to one day replace Alex Trebek. 
I'm not saying that he is going anywhere anytime soon. Alex Trebek clearly loves his job. He loves what he does. You know, but one day he might want to retire, and I am thinking that Ken Jennings might be his replacement. It makes sense. It's almost like we all know, or at least people who are fans of Jeopardy, even people who aren't really fans of the show and don't watch it religiously, I think they all know who Ken Jennings is. So by putting him on the show and making him an ambassador, you're kind of letting the audience get even more comfortable with him as not being a contestant. Like we're so used to him, you know, answering the quote questions in the form of a sentence, but um you know what I was trying to say there, but he is now no longer on the show to win money. I believe this is a paid position and, you know, viewers are going to get to get used to seeing him as doing something other than being a contestant. So I really think it's possible that they are grooming him to replace Alex one day. And listen, these long running shows, it's okay to Think about who is going to be the replacement. I know they're in the Bachelor world. There have been talks on who's going to replace Chris Harrison one day. And I hope that day never happens. But, you know, got to be realistic. One day, these men are going to want to retire. And that is okay. So I'm excited for this new role for Ken Jennings. And I am excited to see where that leads. If you guys want to let me know what you think, go on to Instagram and, you know, send me a DM. What do you think is happening with Jeopardy? And finally, the last little piece of television news, kind of, sort of, it's with one of the famous faces in television. I feel like we just finished talking about trademarks the other day, but Kim Kardashian West just trademarked KKW Home as she looks to expand her empire with a line of home goods. So I can totally picture Kim expanding into home decor. Absolutely. I know a few episodes ago when we talked about the trademarks, a lot of the Kardashians and Jenners just go ahead and trademark a bunch of things in case they ever want to pursue that line of work. But Kim doing home decor is something that I really, really picture her doing more so than any of her sisters. I can totally picture like releasing vases candles, area rugs, and even hardware in that minimalistic and nude style that she is very famous for. It's not my particular style for a home, but I know a lot of people absolutely love that minimalistic look and they do idolize her home. They love that whole clutter-free. I really am kind of looking forward to see what she's going to produce. I would love a KKW vase, um, but she's not all into clutter. So I think everything that she does do under KKW Home are going to be useful and not so much knickknacky. That's why I bring up hardware. I can definitely see her having a hardware line, um, like for sinks and for cabinets Just, again, no knickknacks. Everything that she's going to produce, if she does go down this, you know, down this road, which I think she will, I don't think it would be a headline if she wasn't, but everything will be practical and will be something that you use. No knickknacks. I don't think she's going to come out with wreaths. I will be very shocked if she comes out with wreaths. I love wreaths. Don't get me wrong. I think they're great and they're beautiful and they're seasonal and they're fun. I just don't see that's her vibe. So that is that. Who knows? Maybe we're going to see KKW Home at a Home Depot or a Lowe's or a Target. Ooh, a Target line. Her and Chrissy Teigen together in Target. How much fun is that? Now, ooh. Oh, the more I think about it, the more I love it. All right. I can get behind this, Kim. I totally, totally can. So anyway, that is all I have on the TV news. So we talked about Dr. Dre. We talked about things that are going on in television that I am looking forward to. And then now I'm the next segment. I'm going to have to yell at some people. I didn't want it to get to this point, but here we are. We're going to talk about why it's not okay to body shame somebody in 2020. Can't believe we have to have this conversation. Um, But I wouldn't be doing my job if we didn't discuss this. And then finally, at the end, I am going to be sharing with you some of my most 
favorite iconic fashion moments in the entertainment world. You are not going to want to miss it. I will be posting all of those pictures on Instagram because it's kind of hard to do a segment without the pictures that go with it, but I will do my best to describe these outfits. Anyway, guys, be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back, friends. I hope you enjoyed that quick little break. Maybe grabbed yourself something to drink, uh, maybe a little snack. Who knows? But anyway, I hope you're enjoying our time together. I know that I am. We talked about Dr. Dre. We talked about TV news. And now we're going to talk about something that I don't want to talk about, but we have to talk about. Guys, body shaming and age shaming is not okay, people. I can't believe that it's 2020 and you still have to be reminded of that. Well, not you in particularly, but maybe you know someone. Um, So I bring this up because Caitlin Bristow experienced a moment of weakness as her reality TV comeback on Dancing with the Stars quickly approaches. This past weekend, the former Bachelorette shared a photo of herself in tears on her Instagram story about the criticism that she's been facing over her physical appearance. She says, quote, I forgot how mean people are when you go on TV. Just so many, she looks old and plastic comments everywhere. You win today, trolls. It got to me. In a follow-up video on her Instagram story, Bristow, who is among the celebrity contestants on season 29 of Dancing with the Stars, explained the emotions she was feeling. Quote, I had a good cry, didn't somehow ruin my eyeliner. I honestly am so tired that anything will set me off right now. Plus, I am PMSing, so great combo. But I felt my feelings. I got it out. Sometimes I like to be honest on here, but not always be woo happy. I had a weak moment, cried it out, felt it all. Now poured myself a glass of wine and remember what's important in life. In a recent interview with People TV's Reality Check, Bristow said that she's feeling a lot of pressure ahead of the Dancing with the Stars premiere. So guys, I literally have no idea who needs to hear this. I don't know. But body shaming is not okay. It's not okay today. It's not okay yesterday. And it's not okay tomorrow. Never. Don't ever, ever, ever do it. Just don't do it. Do not do it. I feel like people feel that they can so easily hide behind their screen, whether it's a phone, an iPad, a tablet, computer, whatever has a screen, people feel like they could hide behind it. I went and read some of these comments on Twitter and Instagram. People are downright vicious. Social media has somehow normalized being cruel to others. And when I say like the troll is like called out, they tend to say like a troll, if a troll gets called out, right? If someone says like, oh, you don't have to, you're just being a troll. You don't have to like go after so-and-so's appearance. They always come back with the same ridiculous comment of, if you put yourself out there, you're bound to have criticism against you. Like, okay, congratulations, you know, a four-syllable word. And second, yes, 
That is correct. Everyone is entitled to an opinion. But to take the time to write something on social media, on someone else's social media page that you most likely follow, or else how else would you see it, is so disheartening. So for those of you who don't know or aren't like down with the lingo, trolling is defined as creating discord on the internet by starting quarrels or upsetting people by posting inflammatory or off-topic messages in an online community. Basically, a social media troll is someone who purposely says something controversial in order to get a rise out of other users. Now listen... I have plenty of opinions, as some of you may know, but I would never and I could never actively post on someone's accounts these nasty, vile, and vicious comments. So let's take, for example, I am not a fan of Justin Bieber. Not a fan. And that's okay. It's okay to have this opinion. Not everybody needs to be a fan of everybody else. But guess what? I just don't follow him on social media. That is literally it. Done. It is a non-issue. I don't comment any of my opinions and I don't attack him. It's literally that easy. I don't know. It's insane to think that something can be so simple, but I promise you it can. So to any trolls listening or people who think that they're out there just speaking the truth, how about you put that same exact energy into being a better person rather rather than cutting down someone you have never met? It just boggles my mind that people can go online and go to someone's Instagram page or go to someone's you know, story and hit the reply button or the comment button and write these terrible, terrible things or insult these, like insult, insert these like vomiting emojis. Like who hurt you? Who destroyed you so bad that this is what you do in your free time? Because realistically, you're probably just sitting on the toilet and you probably have nothing better going on in your life. So you feel like that's what you do. I don't know if it's to feel better about yourself. I don't know if it really is just to like get a rise out of people. I mean, it's so sad that Caitlin Bristow had to address the trolls had to address the people that were commenting on her lips or her filler or her Botox. Well, guess what? She uses Botox and she's very, very open about it. And it is not your decision on how she looks. And oh, did she get older from when she was on The Bachelorette? It's so crazy how time works because everybody literally just gets older. That's what time does. I don't... That might be a news flash for you, and I'm sorry that I'm the one who had to break that news to you, but when time moves forward, we get older, just the way it is. And to be honest, you know, society doesn't make it easy for women to get older, which is why we do the Botox, which is why we do the fillers, which is why we dye our hair. A lot of times, burnettes will dye their hair blonde to hide the grays because for some reason, people don't like it when women have gray hair. I didn't make the rules. So we have, us as women, we have so much pressure to always look perfect, to always look young, because you guys have made it seem like if we don't look young, you're going to go chase someone younger. So we're conditioned to that, first of all. And plus, to make it in Hollywood... It, you do have that pressure to be young or else they're going to go for the next best thing. So whatever, you don't have to comment on it because you're just making it worse. And it, you'll just mind your own business and let us all live. Let us all live our best lives. You don't need to be a troll. So that is my opinion on that. And I feel like having an opinion against trolls is totally okay. Yeah, I don't think I'm stepping over any lines with that one. So I am wishing Caitlin Bristow the absolute best of luck moving forward. It's not going to be an easy road for her being on a competitive show. She is going to have judges critiquing her. And not only that, but the audience is going to critique her. And listen, if you have a favorite dancer or you're rooting for someone, that's great. And if you want to criticize someone's technique and their form on the dance floor, totally fine. That's what the show is. But the second you start going after somebody's appearance, that's where the line is. Do not do it. Just don't. Think before you tweet. 
think before you post. There's no reason for it. And again, it is 2020. I don't understand how this is still something that needs to be discussed. I don't understand why this is still such a big issue. I feel like everywhere on the internet, everyone is talking about like their authentic self and everyone wants to be real. And then the second someone is real, you get attacked. I don't understand how we are still in this vicious, vicious cycle. But here we are. So anyway, don't do it. Don't do it. And uh, don't do it. So that are, those are the topics that we have talked about today. We talked about Dr. Dre. We talked about things that are happening in the television world. And we talked about why it's not okay to body shame or age shame people. Just don't do it. Uh, next, we're going to go and go back into the lighthearted things. I am going to share some of my favorite fashion in the entertainment world. Guys, stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. Be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Okay, friends, welcome back. In honor of fall fashion, I am giving you a roundup of some of the most iconic looks in Hollywood. These are all my opinions. Again, this is one of my favorite parts of the episode where I feel like you can kind of get to know me. Um, So again, these are the top 10 outfits that I just absolutely adore in Hollywood. All pictures will be posted onto my Instagram account at gsmc underscore entertainment. This is a trend that I have seen on TikTok, outfits that you just find yourself constantly thinking about. So this is my roundup. So please go check it out, follow, like, comment, do all of the things. Just no body shaming. Um, So let's get this started. So at number 10, I have Marge Simpson in a pink Chanel suit of The Simpsons. As a kid, I watched The Simpsons all the time. I feel like this pink Chanel suit was like my fashion awakening. Yes, even though it's a cartoon. Plus, I'm a sucker for the pink and black combo. I loved it in elementary school and I am still in love with it today. Like put me in a pair of black leggings and an oversized baggy, like light pink, hot pink, any shade of pink t-shirt and I am feeling my absolute best self. I mean, if I could have this pink Chanel suit in my closet... I mean, I would own it 100%. It is so my style. It is classic. It is beautiful. Yes, I am aware that it's a cartoon. I love that episode. I love that outfit. Marge, chef's kiss. Love it. So number nine, I have Haley's pink velvet mini dress from My Date with the President's Daughter. Now, I'm probably aging myself a lot with this outfit. My Date with the President's Daughter was a made-for-TV movie, which came out back in 1998. This dress, to everyone who grew up in the 90s, is so iconic. I think every girl knows exactly what I am talking about. And if you don't, head over to our Instagram account right now and take a look. It is so amazing. The dress would make such a comeback today. It would fly off the shelves. I mean, someone out there has it, and I'm here to say that I need it. Number eight, I have Harry and Sally's respective chunky sweaters from When Harry Met Sally. Not only is this an iconic and perfect movie, but the sweater game is just unmatched. Now, now that we are here in like pumpkin spice season, pretty much like 
we are going into full force pumpkin spice season. I am getting ready to break out all the sweaters or whatever I have left or what I have recently purchased. And I could only hope to look as fantastic as these two do. It is simply exquisite. Who knew that I would be just sitting here talking about sweaters, calling them exquisite. But, you know, today is the day. Number seven, Jennifer Lopez in her Versace dress from the Grammys in 2000. So 20 years ago, even though you might not have been around in 2000, but I'm sure that you know exactly what dress I am talking about. It is the green one with the insane plunging neckline and the slit and it's sheer. Yes, that one. This dress changed fashion on the red carpet. This was the dress heard around the world. This dress was a cultural reset. This dress is everything. Often imitated, but never duplicated. I mean, Jennifer Lopez, when she picked this to like step out onto the red carpet... That was probably one of the smartest decisions of her career. It is purely iconic. Number six, I have Lupita Nyong'o's baby blue Prada dress from the 2013 Academy Awards. I don't know why I said Academy that way. Um, Never in my life have I ever seen a more perfect fit, just the right color, and the confidence There is this shot of her, I mean, it almost looks like she is twirling this gown and she's on a cloud and it's the most picture perfect thing I've ever seen. And you know what? Not a bad dress to accept your first Academy Award in. Not too shabby at all, girlfriend. Number five, we have Nicole Kidman's sparkling diamond ensemble in Moulin Rouge. Now, let me tell you something about Moulin Rouge. The fact that I do not own this getup is just beyond my comprehension, number one. Number two, I have an unhealthy crush on Ewan McGregor, like really unhealthy. Um, But I didn't care for Nicole Kidman when I was younger, and I can't explain why. I don't know what it was. I just didn't – she just didn't do it for me. But I loved Ewan, so I had to watch Moulin Rouge because Ewan McGregor was in it, and I watched it, and I – fell in love. And then it made me a fan of Nicole Kidman. And I think her introduction in that movie and her sparkling diamond outfit is just so on point. I tried to recreate it at one point. That's a true story. Uh, when I was a senior in high school, tried to recreate that outfit. Needless to say, it did not turn out great. So if anyone wants to recreate it for me, please let me know at GSMC underscore entertainment on Instagram. Uh, I will be there waiting for you to contact me, whoever you are. But yes, love that outfit. Go check it out. Uh, Number four, I am going to throw a little bit of a curveball on this one. It is yet another unhealthy obsession of mine, but I am obsessed. And it's with a jacket worn by Jeffrey Chaucer, played by Paul Bettany in A Knight's Tale. This is a very underrated outfit. A lot of people would never in a million years say that it's iconic. But every year since 2001, I look for a similar looking jacket whenever the winter coats start to come out. And I have yet to find one in all of these years. That's Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. It shouldn't be that hard, but it is. I just would do anything for this jacket. And my best friend, Sarah, she knows. She knows how obsessed I am with this coat. I would talk about it all the time. Why would I talk about a coat so much? I do not know, but I did. And it's just this long brown jacket and it has like this fur or faux fur like lining And it's just incredible. And again, I still have not found it. So Paul Bettany, if you're out there with that coat, I will gladly take it off of your hands. Listen, one day I think I'm going to find this jacket. I don't know if it's going to be anytime soon, but one day I will find it. And hopefully it'll be this year or next year or the year after that. I don't know. Number three, another one that probably nobody on the planet would agree with me, but it just, this this one's really embarrassing. This is the black peacoat and the denim jeans look from the Boondock Saints. 
It is so embarrassing, but I wore this combo all the time after I watched this movie. I thought I was just too cool for school. I mean, I'd be in high school just with my denim and my black peacoat, usually like a black t-shirt, and I kind of made it feminine, so like the black t-shirt would be like tight and form-fitting, and then like the denim would be like a little baggy because that was the style back then, and then I would always wear my black peacoat, but peacoats were just in style then anyway, so it wasn't too crazy, but it was just embarrassing that I wore it because of the Boondock Saints movie. So I can't make this list without including that. Um, I will be called out by my friends. So that is why it is on the list. So ta-da, now you know an embarrassing fact about me. Number two is the red dress that Rose wears in Titanic when she brings Jack Dawson to dinner. It was, I had to take a outfit from Titanic because it is one of, if not my favorite movies of all time. She looks incredible in everything that she wears, but there's just something about this red dress and the black beading and how she goes from this super formal life in one part of the night and then goes into Jack's like laid back life in the other portion of the evening. It is just, just incredible. She, Kate Winslet looks incredible in it. Her hair is beautiful. I actually requested the Rose DeWitt Bucator hair when I got married. I have curly hair, and I really liked how she had curly hair in the movie. You know, a lot of people have straight hair. I have curly hair, and it's hard to style curly hair. It's hard to get inspired by others who have curly hair because we don't see it often. So I wanted Rose hair. Fun fact, um, what made me happy is that people did come up to me and say, you have, your hair looks like Rose from Titanic. And I was like, "Mm, thank you. But anyway, love her hair in this part. It was an inspiration of mine. It was how I could be like her. She's so beautiful, so iconic. Every, it's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Everything about it is perfect. And I will fight to anybody who says or implies otherwise. And number one, I do not think you can have a list of iconic Hollywood fashion without this one. If you don't know what it is, please take a guess. Take a guess as to what I'm going to say is the number one most iconic fashion of Hollywood from a movie in the 90s. Guys, it's the yellow plaid outfit or pretty much every outfit that Cher wears in Clueless. I mean, the white Calvin Klein dress, the red Aaliyah dress, and the matching jacket, which is totally my style. Even the pistachio-colored outfit with the fur-lined sleeves. Everything she wears just looks incredible. She has influenced an entire generation, and for that, I am forever grateful. Her outfits will always live on, and they will always be the most iconic. I mean, she just, everything she wears in that movie is incredible, but that plaid yellow outfit. I mean, everyone who sees it knows exactly what movie it is. They can place her. It's just great. It's, I want one. I don't have one, but I want one. Um, But anyway, that is definitely the most iconic. I really love the white Calvin Klein dress. And then when her father asks her to cover up, she just has like that sheer cover up, that white sheer cover up that she puts on afterwards. I think that is probably one of my favorite looks in the movies. And then definitely like the red dress with the matching jacket that's like all like poofy and super like form fitted at the waist and then like poofs out. And that's when she gets like what left at a gas station in the valley. Like I absolutely love that outfit. I would wear that every day of my life if I had it. But I don't, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to stick to my black leggings and pink oversized t-shirt. So guys, that is the show today. It was pretty laid back. It was pretty easy. Again, a nice quiet weekend. I hope everyone, as you're listening to this, I hope you had a nice and relaxing Labor Day weekend. I hope you got to spend it with maybe family you haven't seen in a while or friends. And I hope that you socially distanced and were responsible. So and now, you know, summer has ended and fall is fall is here, guys. So I'm going to hit up Starbucks. I'm going to go grab me a pumpkin cold brew whipped cream goodness 
Guys, until next time, I'm Jessica, and thank you for listening to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask you to please remember to subscribe to the show and write a beautiful and glowing review that really, really helps us out. Also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, I would really appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think of the show. What would you like me to talk about? Guys, thank you so much and have a wonderful, wonderful night. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.